Please rise. All rise. Please pass the basket. We need the money in that order. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart, or as we like to call it, Sunday Mass. Mass meaning men, period, A-R-S, as you call it. Wait, what's it stand for? I don't know. Men are so smart. Wow, I never really thought about that. <laughs> Just a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And if nobody has done it yet, let us be the first to wish you a very happy Father's Day Sunday. Yes. Today is Father's Day, and we're recording our show. And um, Father's Day is is a great day uh, for you to spend just a little time, if you can, with dear old dad. Maybe um, set aside your differences and, you know, go have a beer with him or whatever it is he likes to do. It's a you great know? day unless you're in Oakland, California, where it's the most confusing day of the year. You can send your mail to, <laughs> what are you, Ronnie at menaresosmart.com. You know what, they're still kind of reeling there from losing the NBA Finals. Mm -hmm. uh, very sad. Yeah. No one, who would have thunk it, right? Yeah. All right, so again, happy fa happy Father's Day, right? Happy Father's Day to you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, before we get into some of our content this morning, I wanted to share with you some statistics. And as you can see here on the page, there is uh, our website. I don't know if you've ever seen the analytics to a website before. No. But I thought you might find this fascinating. Uh, it shows uh, each month so far in the year of 2019 how many hits and how many visitors. And our website is doing terrific, and I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, it appears that the most watched day this month has been June the 10th. Mm -hmm. You can see that there. And we scroll down just a little bit more. Uh, people are watching this show, Ronnie, right here, as you can see, Yeah. at noon. I find that a little interesting. Yeah, I do too. I they guess take their lunch break. Yeah, lunch break. They're spending it with us. Uh -huh. We appreciate that. Uh, and then finally, here is the screen I wanted to get to, and I believe that these hits on our website, menaresosmart.com, um, they stem from our videos promoting our website that you see run across the screen. And uh, obviously in the United States, uh, we did very well. We're a big uh, hit in the States. You betcha. And here are a, a bevy of other countries that watch our show and go to our website on a pretty consistent basis, I would mm -hmm. say, Ryan. Yeah. Canada, China has now joined us, the Russian Federation, Japan, Austria, a country called Unknown. I've heard of that. Unknown Extend. <laughs> I think I my relatives, I have some relatives from there. Yeah, I think that's your genetics, your genetic background. <laughs> uh, Chile, Ukraine, Slovak Republic, uh -huh. Latvia. Latvia, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like that show. And how about Morocco? Morocco Mole. Yeah. Man, Ooh. I haven't thought about that in a long time. Digging he used deep. to wear that fez yes. with the little thing that would hang down. I don't Dang. know what that's called. A bobber. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so anyway, there you've seen our website. Um, if you haven't already gone to it, check it out. It is, as I mentioned, menaresosmart.com. All right, a couple other things I wanted to get to this morning. Uh, speaking of technology, Ronnie, I had a funny uh, situation on my cell phone. Um, somebody sent me a text this morning while I was doing my radio show. Yeah. And said, what did your dad used to call barracudas? And so, I know this. Yeah, he he. Uh, let me get it real quick. I'm sorry, I should have had it up. But I got a lot going on here. He says, "How did your father say barracuda? Was it bracacuda? No, no. That's way too complex for dad. Yeah, it's a couple too many syllables. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So my dad used to call it a bacaruda, a bacaruda. He, he mispronounced lots of different words. So I tried to type that into my phone, Ron. He. Bacaruda. Bacaruda. <laughs> and it auto-corrected to back studs. Hmm. That sounds painful. Back studs? It, you listen to every one of my conversations on my phone here, whoever you are, big brother. 
and you got back studs out of Bakaruda? Come on! Well, that's a pretty common thing in yeah. a lot of tattoo parlors. They do back studs. Yeah, I, I hadn't thought about that. Who knew? Oh, maybe I'll get one. <laughs> Not a chance in the I world. I told them we already got one. No. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, an email question here, Ronnie. Oh, I love um, this. Who was smarter, Lou or Ronnie? I'm not touching that. Huh. Which may say something of which one of us is smarter. Just saying. What are you pointing to me? You pointing I'm, fingers? What are you doing? I'm just saying. I'm going to leave that up to the listeners, or the watchers. Oh, the viewers? The viewers. <laughs> that just shows who the smart one is. <laughs> well, some just listen. Yeah, that's there are, true. <laughs> we've been we've been made aware that some people just listen. Just the people in unknown, the country of unknown. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, you decide. And you know what? Leave that here. You're watching this show along with us. We're doing Sunday morning mass here. It starts at 7 a.m. on the left coast and 10 a.m. on the right coast. And we're watching this as it's happening with you right. and taking your comments. So I'd like to see some of those right here, and we'll share them. Uh, who's smarter? You know, Lou maybe we could put a survey. Ronnie? Maybe we could put a survey up. Uh, we'll yeah, I we could do it on the on the Facebook page. I know we could do there, and we could do it on our website as well. Okay, I could put a question up there right there. There you go. Okay, so check out our website and our Facebook page. Yep. Website is menarsosmart.com. Uh, on Facebook, we're at Men Are So Smart. Kind of weird how that worked out. It's huh? Crazy. Yeah. Somebody was thinking. Uh, okay, so let's see. Next question. Dear Lou and Ronnie, love your show. Thank you. Okay. I watch when I take public transportation home. And this person says, I work in New York City proper. Oh, well, that's all anybody takes there is. Yeah. Some you, way. You don't want to drive. Or Uber. I know you've known each other since high school. Yep. Did you ever do any pranks when you were younger? Really? You gotta ask? <laughs> what would you think? Did we ever not do any pranks? <laughs> what would you we think the there? answer would be to that question? <laughs> Thank you for asking it. That's from Melissa, and she oh. says she's on the right coast. Okay. All right, cool. Sometimes uh, the right coast is the wrong coast. Yeah, well, though. the left coast ain't right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. I got a couple I could talk about, but the one I think that was the most famous, Ronnie, was, um, and this got. This got news coverage on TV. <laughs> oh, I remember this one. I'll get to that. Yeah. Because my mom saw it on TV and she brought it to my attention. Shocking. <laughs> when I was younger, and I guess it was my senior year in high school, um, I worked at a bubble machine car wash. I think that's probably pretty regional. No one else knows what that is. But yeah. they were some of the very first car washes that were kind of state of the art. And so... Uh, the thing that was the bubble machine was famous for was they had to have a fountain out front. That's right. That was constantly bubbling. Yep. There were two locations. There was one on Marconi and Howe, not that you know where that is, but and there was one about five miles away on Arden Way, and and that had a bigger fountain. Wasn't there also one on El Camino and Mission? Yeah, I think as a matter of fact there was. I didn't know anybody at that one, but my buddy worked at the one on Arden Way, so we were constantly battling back and forth who had more sales and car washes. It was, you know. Epic. Oh, sure. Talk about a subculture. <laughs> what was it, five guys? So anyway. Um, they write songs about that stuff, you know. Uh, what do you mean? Rolls Royce, car wash. Oh, that's right, of we're course. Car Rolls wash. Royce. Yeah. yeah. So we got this idea one night that since those fountains ran 24 hours, yeah. that sometime around midnight, We'd go over to the one on Arden Way, and we would pour some soap suds into their fountain so that it would be bubbles, right? Bubble, bubble machine Make car the wash. real bubble machine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we did, all dressed in black, Ronnie. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, we took our two cars, Steve Grimalis and I. He had his uh, red 67 Camaro, and I had a root beer brown 68 Firebird. And we drove over there into their parking lot. It was very quiet. It must have been 1 o'clock. And so we poured some soap into the, the, the fountain. And we stood there and we watched and we go, that ain't cutting it. Not enough. We need more soap. Need more cowbell. We brought about four gallons <laughs> with us. Why, I don't know, just so we wouldn't run out. So we decided, let's pour all four gallons in there and see what happens. 
Just bubble a little bit more, right? If half a gallon's good, well, we four gallons got to be better. We thought, boy, that didn't do much at all. Oh, well, we tried. We hop in our cars and we drive away. The next morning, my mom wakes me up at bed and she goes, LJ, uh, Lewis James, my name. LJ, you got to come here and see this on TV. The bubble machine car wash, the fountain has bubbled over and it's running across Arden Way all the way across the street and they've got traffic shut down. Oh, God. Oh, yes. To this day, a very small amount of people know the truth and the statute of statute limitations. limitations completely run out so yeah, i think i'm okay gone. but you know what between all of us <coughs> you me ronnie you never heard the story yeah what about you ronnie so i have one that's also slightly illegal okay um we'll we, change your name for the purpose yes. of the story to vega ronnie possibly somebody named vega ronnie yeah uh, -huh. uh had a friend who had a 69 camaro okay and we had a stolen fire extinguisher from J.C. Penney's. Over there in Country Club Plaza, mm -hmm. there was a J.C. Penney's. And right when you walk in the back door off the Butano side, mm -hmm. 10 feet inside the door was one of those big, gigantic chrome fire extinguishers. I think I remember that. So one of my friends walked in, picked it up, and walked out of the door with uh -huh. it. Uh-huh. So, and they kept replacing it. We stole two or I three of them out of there. Yeah. Okay, I exaggerate. <laughs> so, two or three. Two or three of them. <laughs> and so, anyway, we took that first one. Yeah. And at El Camino High School, which is where we went to school, after a football game, there was no pay phone. And this is way predate cell phones. Yeah. There was no pay phone on the El Camino campus. You had to go across the street to a Chevron, Chevron. station. Chevron, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the line would be a hundred kids long. <laughs> it would come up eastern, and then head west on El Camino. Uh, and we would drive down the line of kids and spray them all with the fire extinguisher, which we had emptied out. And it was it had a screw on top. You could put water in there, or as we used to put water with sugar, lots and lots of sugar because that made it sticky. Oh yeah. Um, and then you take it to a gas station, it had a little air nipple, and you could charge it up with air. Compress it. Mm -hmm. Compressed air. And so I would probably shoot about 20 feet or so, which was just perfect for shooting a line of pedestrians yeah. <laughs> out of the backseat of a 69 Camaro. I laugh, because I know it's wrong. But where it really got sketchy was... It gets worse? Yeah, there was a slightly worse. There were two of us. There were three of us in... Mark's Camaro, Mark Bertolucci had this 69 Camaro. Uh, Ed was sitting in the front seat, and I was sitting in the back seat. Uh -huh. Both windows down on the passenger side, and we're in the area of Kingsway and Watt Avenue. Okay, by the bowling alley. Right by the bowling alley. And as we're coming down Kingsway, here's a guy riding on a bicycle. Oh, like, no. Eh, perfect target. Let's, yeah. let's get him. So we spray him. Okay, no big deal. And then Mark says, you know what we should do? We should circle around the block and get him. Because he was hot. He was really hot after we sprayed him. And you don't mean from the temperature. He was not hot from the temperature. He was hot from being sprayed. He was very hot. So we went around the block and we sprayed him again. Oh, my God. And we're laughing. We are. We're laughing. We go, man, that was funny. You know what we should do? A third time? We should go around a third time. Yeah. Well, let's go get him. So we go around the block. We come back, and he's he's not that much further down the road. <laughs> but he is dripping wet. <laughs> he's much wetter than he was initially. We sprayed him a third time. Now, good, good on you, Ron. Yes. So, so we said, you know what? Probably spraying people three times, that's been done. Yeah. Nobody's ever sprayed the same guy four times. <laughs> So we go around the block, and now he's who, down there. Who made that roll up? <laughs> go on. So if you remember, if you know where Del Paso Manor School is. Yeah, yeah, I do. So he's at, we see him, and he's leaning over, talking to a car as we're coming up behind him. Uh-oh. It's a sheriff. Okay. And so as we go by, he does this. Like, there they go. That's them. And we're like, oh, crap. So we take the first street that heads out to Marconi mm -hmm. Avenue, 
and Ed throws his fire extinguisher out the window. Oh, no. It lands on some junipers and rolls out into the street. Of course it did. And uh, I was able to huck mine actually on to the junipers, and then we just we left. Uh -huh. Went back about four hours later in a different car. Of course. They were still there. Oh, wow. Thank you. Don't have to steal any more fire extinguishers. <laughs> <laughs> Supply and demand, you know. And we continued to terrorize most of Sacramento with <laughs> fire extinguishers with sticky water. All right. There you go. There's our prank stories. Yep. Uh, let's see. Forrest Finn. Oh. Um, let's see. Oh, I wanted to let you know. Thanks to Matt. M-E-H. Yes. Uh, Ronnie, you know the story. We got the book. Mm -hmm. The Thrill of the Chase. We the got it. The book arrived, and it came to work on Friday and opened it up, and I was thrilled. It was from the book store there in New Mexico, and it's wrapped very nicely. And someone suggested it was Sledneck. Yes. Uh, Sledneck recommended that we read the book the first time very slowly. Don't rush through it. Well, let me tell you how slowly I'm reading the book. I left it at work. Yeah. Don't! Sorry, people. But it's Father's Day weekend. Yeah, we wouldn't have been reading it anyway. Yeah, probably not a very good chance. Yep. Um, okay, so uh, we are with you as this show is live, 7 a.m. on Pacific Time and 10 a.m. on the East Coast. I wanted to say that Ronnie... Our show has made it onto Joshua Schlossnagel's Sunday Morning Playlist. Wow. Yeah. I think we finally arrived. I think we have. I had no idea yeah. that uh, we were that popular. Wow. But Joshua Schlossnagel, thank you very much for... He even has CBS's Sunday Morning on his playlist. He thinks of us, Sunday Morning Mass. Mentioned in the same breath. Yeah. What does that tell you? We're there. Uh, what does that tell you? We're there. New subs. Uh, ne Neck109. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Ah, uh, Rockin. AU underscore Rockin. Anthony Gutierrez1. Beanpole. Rave Rider. Tom Sa Todd Sampson. And one John Perry huh. have also subscribed to the show recently. And. <clears throat> It may be some shows just are worried about how what their number is. I'm not saying that we don't think about it, but we are very grateful for each and every one yeah. of the subscribers that we have. And you know the thing that's amazing, Ronnie? This I had always hoped that this would happen. We did, I don't know, a hundred shows or so before we did a Fen episode. Right. Oh, at least a hundred. Yeah. And um, the Fen episode that we did was... The second story in a two-story episode. And so we didn't even lead with the Fen treasure. We led with something else. I can't oh, remember what it was. Right, 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 right. You remember? Yes. And so then all of a sudden, our numbers on the, that very first Fen episode started going up and, and up cool, and up man. and up. And so, as I mentioned in the last bit there, that the supply and demand, you know, there was a demand for people wanted us to see, see us talking about the Fen show. And so that's what we've done. But that's not to say that we still don't do the funny stories. We got. We do a lot of. We got plenty of funny coming up too. Yeah, we we do. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to say that what's happened now is our fan viewers. God bless each and every one of them. They are now looking at our library and going back and looking at some of the shows. I've noticed that some of our old shows are getting. Yeah. More views again. And comments, too. Yes, and comments. And God knows we love your comments. We yep. do enjoy that. Ronnie, I wanted to send out a special thank you because this last week I have been so freaking busy that I have not had a whole lot of time to do commenting. And you took the ball and ran with it. And so I appreciate that. At the same time, let me say that we are both really good about getting back to you. Absolutely. Uh, if, if you comment, you take that time to comment. Dang it, you know, we appreciate that time that you gave up. Yep. Um, and so we try to reply back. And as we've mentioned before, sometimes it might just be a like, but give a thumbs up, but give us a break. Um, it means when we do that, we did see it. Right. And we either don't have time that second to do it or don't we don't have a reply or doesn't require one. 
uh, we will like the comment to show you that we really did enjoy it. The only it. downside to uh, YouTube is you can't see who liked it. Right. Yeah, it just shows somebody liked your comment. Right. Trust us, it's us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is going to like your stupid comment. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, we have been invited and accepted to have our own page on treasuretracer.com backslash community. Uh, they honored us as the only show that gets their own little page, if you will. And we will be posting our videos on there. Mm -hmm. And you can comment there as well. They have some great shows that run on that forum. Well, <clears throat> and they also have people on there that are legit searchers. Truly. They have real boots on the ground, smart searchers there. Mm -hmm. So if you are really into the Fen treasure hunt at all, you could seriously help yourself out by looking at uh, what some of these people are writing. Absolutely. And Sean, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Uh, we will be coming on your show very soon. Uh, Ronnie and I, we don't even qualify to be on your show until after we've read the book. Yeah. And, and that's the one thing I really wanted to get across here. We don't have a whole lot of time left. Um, we're going to read this book. I know everybody wants us to. Right. And meh, M-E-H, meh, was kind enough to get it sent to us. Yep. And uh, for that, we're, we'll be eternally grateful. And I think once Ronnie and I have read the book and maybe even highlighted some of it and made some notes or whatever the case might be, uh, I think we might auction that off, Ronnie. There at, you go. And um, we'll give that money to Forrest Fenn's uh, program that he runs. Uh, we'll donate all of that uh, thanks to you. And we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll play yeah. it by ear. Yeah. Okay, let's see. we got to get out of here because we're running out of time on that episode. Um, thank you again for watching. Check out our website. Ronnie, our website is? MenAreSoSmart.com and uh, what is your email address? Uh, Ronnie at mentorsosmart.com. And mine would be Lou at mentorsosmart.com. Yeah. Um, we hope you've enjoyed today's episode. We will stay with you for the next couple hours to yeah. take any of your comments or questions. We're not big on suggestions, but you know you can try. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna whack you over the head or anything. We might kick you. Uh, but as I've mentioned, that's not going to help because we're going to do whatever we do. We, we do we. we. Yeah, we do we. Yeah, we do we. And I have to we. So, <laughs> thank you very much. We appreciate you attending Mass today. And again, Happy Father's Day. Yes, if anybody asks you, you could say you were at Mass this morning. That's right. And uh, you had a good time. Uh, I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And this has been the Sunday Morning Mass edition of Men Are So Smart.